Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, hello. I am so excited that you decided to click on this thumbnail. Today I'm going to be reviewing all of the books that I read in 2023. If that sounds interesting, stay tuned. Earlier this year, actually right after the new year of 2023, I started what I call the Bedazzled Buddhist Book Club. Um, and I need to shorten that because it's a mouthful. But basically the point was just to get myself reading because I used to read a lot when I was younger for pleasure. I've read a lot of fiction, but some biographies and I just love to read. It was always my escape. And as I got older, I just stopped reading and um, I really want to get back to it. So I started this with, you know, no pressure just to pick a book and read it and um, hold myself accountable by having to make a video to come back and tell you about it and then pick another one and go on from there. So in doing that, I read, um, read because some of them are in quotes, 13 books this year. So I am so excited by that because that's about 12 more than I've been reading a year for several years now. Um, so I want to tell you all about these books. I have them ranked and um, let's get started. But before I do, I really want to mention this book here, which is A Thousand Books to Read Before You Die. Um, this book is, um, it's such a wonderful resource. As I've said many times before, this is this one individual's opinion and list of the books to read. Other people have published lists as well, but as a, as a jumping off point to find books to read, um, I highly, highly recommend it. And you can also find these lists online, so you do not have to buy the book, but I own the book, I love it, and I actually love reading it as a book itself. So um, can't have had this book club without that book, and I will continue to use it um, moving forward. So starting with my list in last place, and I don't have it anymore because I uh, put it in the recycling bin. It is Lewis Carroll in Numberland by Roger Wilson. I, as I said, sometimes like to read biographies. Um, I happen to like math. I've read books before, biographies about mathematicians that I have really enjoyed, and I think I was expecting this one to be along that same vein. Um, I found it to be dry, boring, just, there's nothing good to say about it. <laughs> For some people, this might be their book of the year. They might love it, and I don't mean to diminish the author's enthusiasm for the subject. He clearly wrote a book about it, but um, I only got about 10% in and said life is too short to waste spending a book I'm not enjoying. So that was number 13. But um, there's always going to be some winners. There's going to be some losers. I'm happy that I even read, made an attempt to read it at all. Okay, so that's number 13. In 12th place is A Thousand and One Arabian Nights. This is a book that I picked out from my, um, from my list, from uh, my Thousand Books to Read Before You Die list, and I came upon it and I thought, oh, that's classic literature. I really want some of the things I read to be classic um, books that I've heard about, but I've never actually read. And I was very excited, so I went to Amazon and I picked up a um, paperback copy. And it turns out what I got was just a little portion of the entire thing, because apparently it's three large volumes to contain all of the stories of the 1001 Arabian Nights. I also do not have this book anymore because I put it in a donation bin for um, uh, a local public school. Um, I 
am glad I read some of it, right? I read the equivalent of about 19 or 20 nights worth. And um, it's, I, I understand it's classic literature, but it was, you know, uh, uh, you know, passionate love affairs, um, greed, murder, beheadings, burned at the stake, buried alive. Each story was like a combination of pick any three of those, right? Um, and um, I, it just got to be a little taxing to me. So I said, I'm going to stop there. You know, I've read 19. I'm going to consider that progress. I hope to come back to it. Um, maybe year by year and read a little more of it. Certainly to read um, some of the really classic tales in it, like um, Alibaba and the Forty Thieves. Um, but it, it, was, it was a hard read to get through. So that's number 12. In 11th place is, um, I actually have it now, is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison. So this is um, a book that is the first in a series of three novels. Um, these are all of the sort of fantasy fiction genre. And um, this, you see, was a winner of the Hugo Award, so it won an award for science fiction. And I really love science fiction. It's one of my favorite types of fiction to read. Um, and this book is very interesting because a lot of the characters and the backstory and everything has to do with geology and people that can control the earth and rocks. So I thought that's right up my alley. Um, I just found that, you know, reading the story was a little bit kind of trudging through it. It was probably when I was three quarters of the way through before I thought it got interesting. But I didn't really like the characters. I didn't find the characters necessarily very appealing or anything. So it was okay. I'm glad I read it because I always want to read what others consider good literature. Um, so I'm glad I read it, but there are th other things I read this past year that I like so much better. Um, coming in at number 10 is Alice in Wonderland. So this is a classic children's story that I've actually never read. And this is a book that's been on my bookshelf. Uh, my husband bought this years ago. And he bought it because it was the um, 150th anniversary edition that was illustrated by Salvador Dali. So um, in addition to the story, it has, you know, beautiful Dali artwork in it and um, I, I really enjoyed it I it was an easy read it did not take me long um, there were so many references in it that I was like oh now I get it you know just so many things to it um, I thought it was a good book I enjoyed it I'm glad I read it I definitely want to keep it it goes back on my bookshelf and I'll read it again one day so i um, really happy to have read that one um, coming in at number nine is A Little Life by Hanya Yana Gihara. So this is another, um, you know, notable book, notable work of fiction. So this is fiction set in, you know, modern times. It's contemporary fiction. And, um... I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, it's incredibly poignant, but it's so, um, it was very depressing. And as you're reading it, it's just painful and you kind of know how it's going to end. And um, it, it was just depressing, you know? When I would read it, I'm like, oh my God, this is so depressing. Uh, but then I would read some more. And again, I'm glad I read it because it is um, an example that others have considered, you know, fiction and writing that is worthy of, of, of awards and, and reading and, you know, acknowledging it for a, an amazing um, story. 
Um, but it was, you know, it was hard to get through just because it was just so depressing for most of it. Um, and I actually went online to read why do people read depressing books? Um, and what I saw online is, you know, somebody said it allows you to read about a sad story without having all the emotional trauma that goes along with it because it's not your sad story, right? So I guess that's the case, but um, uh, a little life. Um, so number eight on my list is A Fairy Tale by Stephen King. Now you might say, how can Stephen King rank higher than, you know, this um, award-winning story? Well, um, number one, it's my list, and <laughs> number two, <laughs> it wasn't depressing. It's, it's entertainment. I mean, Stephen King just has such an incredible imagination, and uh, after reading A Little Life, uh, I said I need to read something else. Um, just go polar opposite and so um, my husband had just finished this so I grabbed it I really enjoyed it it was you know a great story interesting characters drama turning points um, happy endings um, stories resolved it was um, really great I really really enjoyed it I really like Stephen King Okay, now we're really getting, we're getting to the top half, and we're really getting into like really good ones. So number seven is Death's End by Shisen Liu. Um, this is the third, third book in the trilogy called the Three Body Problem Trilogy. And, um, the whole thing is fantastic. So the third book of it, I'm ranking in place number seven. This is hardcore science fiction. This gets deep into areas of quantum physics and alternate realities and existential crises. I mean, it is deep and heavy, but it's all science-based, which I absolutely loved. Um, I love the trilogy, absolutely love the trilogy, highly recommend if you like science fiction to read, but of the three, the last book in the three was the one that I liked the least, but I still liked it a lot, I just liked it the least. Number six is actually the first book of the Three Body Problem trilogy, so, um, I absolutely love this. When I read this, I was just blown away. I, never, I hadn't read anything like it. I was so excited by it, and the way it ended was just, uh, it was just so interesting. Such a great, exciting, exciting book. I absolutely loved it. Um, so this is, again, winner of the Hugo Award, um, and um, highly, highly recommend. Number five, um, we're still kind of in the science fiction, but also humor is A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. This is an example of another classic book that I have just never read, um, and I had always heard about it. And again, in reading this book, it was just burst out laughing at points because it was so funny. Again, there were references within it that... Um, I realized I had heard it before, but never knew that they were from this book. So there's actually four more. Um, it's it's uh, it's called like a five part trilogy, I think. <laughs> so um, I will definitely be reading parts two and maybe three um, next year. But this was just such a good time. I absolutely loved it. It's going back on my shelf. I will definitely read it again because it is an easy read and it's a very funny read and no doubt um, I'm sure every time I read it there'll be other things that I'll pick up in it. The, the sense of humor of Douglas Adams, um, it's, it's just extraordinary. It's so funny. So I loved it. Okay, now we're in number four. Number four is this book, A Monster Calls. Um, by Patrick Ness. So this is an interesting story because it's a children's story. Um, so it's one 
for being a children's story, but it's also one for the um, illustrations within it, right? So that's why it has two labels here. So this was actually recommended to me by a, a subscriber. Um, I don't know if they were a subscriber, but they made a comment on one of my videos when I was looking for another book to read, and they mentioned this one. So I thought, you know, let me check it out. And this, again, is a story that it's not a, it's not a happy story, but... Um, and again, I was a little bit reading it like, uh, you know, this is not enjoyable. Um, I don't mean not enjoyable, because um, I, I always like reading um, and going into just other worlds with my mind. Um, but it's, it's not a happy story. It's basically a boy whose mother is dying of cancer, right? Um, but the story, the message it gives at the end was so important that I honestly have found myself on a regular basis coming back to remembering the point made in this story, which is that if you're dealing with a difficult situation, it's okay to want relief from it, right? It doesn't mean you don't love the person. It doesn't mean you want them to die. It doesn't mean you want them to go away, any of that. Um, but it's okay to have those feelings of just being so tired of it that you want it to end and to acknowledge those feelings that it's okay, you're not a bad person. And it just resonated with me so strongly. And I cannot thank the subscriber enough. I have to, uh, hopefully I can go back and find who it was and, and write them a note and thank them. If you're watching this, thank you. Um, because it, it really, really, really touched me, and I'm so grateful to have read it. Okay, number three. <clears throat> this is our top three. Um, number three is Smoke Gets in Your Eyes. Um, such a terrific book. So this is, it's called Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory, okay, um, by Caitlin Doty. And uh, she is um, a uh, mortician, and she talks about, in this book, um, working in a crematory, her thoughts about death, stories about the different um, families she's come across, the people she's come across that she had to cremate, all the stories within the crematorium. But she does it in such a way that there is so much humor and wit while still being completely sensitive um, and respectful of all the individuals. Of course, the names are changed. I absolutely loved it. It, it was funny. It was remarkable. And it's one of those books that from the, the name of it, you know, I, I might have passed it along because I really like fiction and among fiction I really like science fiction. So this is less of what I tend to go for, but thank God I went with my instincts. It was such a good book. Highly recommend. Um, number two is A Dark Forest. This is the second book in the Three Body Problem trilogy. I loved the first book, but this second book gets into whole topics that I've never even considered before. It was so extraordinary in terms of the depth and the breadth of science that was covered, covered in a way that you can understand if you don't understand those topics within science. Um, so creative, and the fact that this trilogy came from the mind of this one individual is extraordinary. So from what I understand, the Three Body Problem is going to be a Netflix series in 2024, um, which I'm really excited about. I also, uh, I'm really curious to see how the story can possibly live up to the book because there are so many nuances and details. But um, this, it was so good. I loved it. And my last book, um, which is my number one book of 2023. I don't have it because I lent it to a friend because I raved about it so much that um, she wanted to read it, so I gave it to her, is Independent People. 
this is a book that I found from my thousand books to read before you die. I just randomly went through and landed on, you know, uh, I was in the I section and I landed on it and I read that it was about an Icelandic sheep farmer. And I've been to Iceland before. It's an extraordinary country. I hope to go back. And um, I said, oh, that sounds interesting. A book about a sheep farmer. And it was hard to read in the beginning because there's there's a lot of like, um, you know, like Norse mythology and the names, like the Icelandic names are just with all the consonants strung together, whatnot. They're not necessarily memorable who is who. So keeping track of everything and the main character is just like, you just want to like strangle him sometimes because in any situation when there's what you should say, he doesn't say it, he says the opposite. So frustrating. And I was about a third of the way through and you know, I always have this conversation with my husband, should you finish a book that you're not enjoying? And he says no. Um, and, uh, but this one, I, I just said, cause the things that people had said about it, the, the praise for it was so high. I said, I got to keep going. So I took it with me on vacation and I have the time to just sit and read. And then I started to enjoy it. And then the enjoyment turned to, I loved it. And then that turned to, I just couldn't put it down. I, all I wanted to do was read. And um, it was just a beautiful, poignant, amazing story with such rich characters. Um, I just thought it was so beautiful in so many ways. It was funny. It was tragic. It was informative. Um, it was amazing. And... It was, without a question, my number one book of last year. Um, so that's my list. I've read 13 books, and I know that seems like a very low number because I see a lot of booktubers where they've read 13 books in a month. I, I don't kind of see how that's possible unless you're a professional reader or something. Um, but I'm not about keeping track of other people or trying to read as much as other people or keep up. I'm just trying to keep up with myself. I read 13 books. I am better for it. And um, it was just a terrific year when I just came across some absolute gems to read that I will definitely come back to. If you've made it this far, um, you are amazing. I really appreciate it. And I hope you consider joining this no rules book club and just let me know you know what you're reading what are the ways that you motivate yourself to read um what do you do when you're reading a book and you're not enjoying it uh i, I would just love to know thank you so much um as we're nearing the end of 2023 i hope you are all safe and well and uh with loved ones or at least um, enjoying this time of year. Happy reading, and I will see you again next year in the Bedazzled Buddhist Book Club where we start reading a whole new set of books. Bye.